Hello! Hi! Hey! Hello! My name is Michelle. This is Actuarial, my actuarial YouTube channel that I've sort of left to die, but I'm um, maybe bringing back. Probably bringing back. Possibly bringing back. Leave me a comment below if you want to um, see more actuarial content. Subscribe if you want to support my channel. Give this video a thumbs up to let me know you do want to see more videos from this woman who has neglected this channel, acknowledges that she neglected this channel. What I don't neglect is my Actuarial Instagram page, which is the inspiration for this YouTube video. Because a couple days ago I was doing a day in the life of an actuary Instagram story day, like chronicling my life. And the day that I was documenting was the day that I was working on my 2021 self-evaluation. At the end of every calendar year, as an employee of a major corporation, I self-evaluate, I write a little what I did this year essay, a little this is why I'm awesome and why you should give me a really good bonus essay. And I was just documenting that. As part of that process, I was talking about sort of how I'm evaluated and what my job description is in my Instagram stories. And I got some good feedback on that in my DMs, so I thought, hey, let's turn this into a YouTube video. So we're gonna talk about what my job description is. Part of the reason why I don't make YouTube videos anymore is because my target audience is really people who are considering becoming actuaries, people who are just starting out their actuarial journey, taking their first couple actuarial exams, entry-level position people, or at least that's who I imagine <laughs> seeks out actuarial content on the internet. And I am a little bit more advanced in my career. If you don't know, I've been working at my company. It'll be seven years full time in March uh, 2022. Oh, it's 2022 now. It's January 1st when I'm filming this. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, sorry, <laughs> years are hard. Um, so it'll be seven years in March 2022 that I've been working full time. I did my first internship at this company in January 2013. So it's been a bit. I became a fellow of the Casualty Actuarial Society in summer 2017. I'd still consider myself a young professional. I'm 30. I pretend to be hip and cool, but I'm not that entry-level example of what an actuary is. That being said, some advice that I do like to give the interns at my company is not only to look at this internship as a do I enjoy what I'm doing as an intern? Like, would I want to do this as an entry-level employee? But also to look at the people who've been at the company for a while and say, is that a career that I want to have? Is that a life that I envision for myself? Maybe I enjoy the entry-level work, but do I enjoy where that entry-level work takes me to? So hopefully some of you will take some inspiration or possibly learn that you really don't want to do what I do um, in hearing about my job description. All this to say, let's get into it. So at my company, there are three levels of what we call individual contributors. These are people who are evaluated on their own personal performance, as opposed to someone like a manager who is evaluated, I don't know exactly how they're evaluated, but evaluated on the performance of the team against certain key metrics, or of a project manager or someone whose um, bonus or evaluation is tied to the performance of a particular product or project or something like that. My evaluation is based on my own personal performance and how I work. I am at the third level of individual contributor at my company. So that's what I do. I've had two promotions over the course of the time that I'm here. I am like top solo person. Um, side note, I have no desire to become a people manager. Maybe one day possibly go into more of that specialist project manager role, but that's not a plan for today. There is a whole job description that goes with my work, and obviously it depends. I work at a very large insurance company, so my work is very specialized, so it tries to be broad and encompassing because the work that I do as a pricing actuary, I come up with prices for a car and home insurance, is different than the work that someone would do in the reinsurance team, is different than the work that someone would do in the reserving team, so it's it's not task, 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 but more broadly how I should be approaching my Role. There are four key accountabilities associated with my tier three <laughs> individual contributor job. Um, the first is project leadership. This is probably the biggest shift as you move up the individual contributor ladder. At the beginning, it's really about doing work. It's about can you work with databases? Can you prepare stuff for an actual analysis? Um, at a mid-tier level, it's about a little bit of decision making, a little bit of coaching. Whereas now at this third level 
um, project leadership is really something that we're supposed to be doing. Um, it's overseeing larger scale projects, it's making sure that things are on track, it's keeping in mind business priorities and making sure that the team and the projects are going in the right direction. It's bringing all my institutional knowledge and making sure that things are being done properly, um, that things are going in the right direction. I feel like I've already said that. If I were to self-evaluate on this one, I would say I am not the strongest. I was the kid in high school who would just do the whole group project when <laughs> we had a group project. Like I'm not good at letting other people work on my work and so I much prefer to work on my own project and just do my own thing. The problem with this is that, you know, there's only so much that you can do by yourself and if you want to be the kind of person who works on your own work and just does your own thing that's fine that's a decent career and that's possibly where my <laughs> where my career is going to end up but there is more power in being able to take what you know and spread it across multiple people and ensure that they grow into the best little actuaries that they can be um but i do i try to coach people i try to inject my own knowledge, my own wisdom, my own mistakes into other people's works so that they can hopefully avoid them. Um, if you talk to my coworkers, they will say I am a little know-it-all, I am very annoying, I do put my nose into other people's projects sometimes, which is not the same thing as leading a project, that is putting your nose in someone else's project. Um, but project leadership is something that I do want to focus on in 2022. Um, not necessarily taking on a project, but I do want to at least learn the skills. So I do plan to take a project management course. We have um, an internal HR project management course. I looked it up. I think it's like two and a half hours. So I don't know how much I'm going to learn from that, but that's going to be my kickoff into some key concepts of project management, learning a little bit about organization, learning a little bit about how to track things. I think those are good key skills for me to learn and then possibly I'll read some books maybe sign up for other courses, I don't know. I think if I at least learn the building blocks of project management, then I can decide whether or not I want to do it. So that's a focus for me in 2022. I thought I would inject my uh, my plans into this. I know you don't care. I mean, maybe you do care. I don't care. The second key accountability is that I'm supposed to act as a technical reference. I am supposed to be still coaching. It still does mean coaching. It also means doing technical peer reviews of people's work, being aware of actuarial techniques. It means making sure that things make sense. I like teaching. I think that's clear from my YouTube videos that I like talking about things that I know about. And so being a technical reference and sticking my nose into other people's projects and saying, hey, this is a way that you could work on this project. I don't know. I think that's something that comes pretty naturally for me. I've written my self-evaluation. I wrote that last week. I haven't had my evaluation. That should happen in January, February. So I don't know how my boss scored me on that skill, but I would score myself as I think I'm a pretty decent technical reference. Not to say I know everything, but I know some things. Third key accountability is business strategy and vision sharing. And this one feels a little bit hard. I don't know if I get what they're going for. As an individual contributor in a very large insurance company, it's hard to feel like I can make decisions. And so if, if what they mean is you are presented with the business's vision and then you prioritize projects in accordance with this vision and you understand how projects fit into the strategy of the company, I think I can do that. Um, I don't think I'm driving vision. I think I can propose projects in accordance with the vision. I think that sometimes someone will come to me with a project, either someone on another team or my boss will say, hey, we got a request for this. And I'll say, listen, I don't think that's a good use of our time. I think that's going to take too long for the value that it brings. I just don't see the point. I don't know if I necessarily fully understand the business vision. I wouldn't say that I was strong at business acumen, but I do think that I can prioritize projects and I do think that I can see how the work that I do fits into a bigger picture. I don't know if I necessarily have the global picture, but yeah, I'm not really sure what they're going for as someone who is so low down in the company. Like I'm not 
driving strategy. Maybe I should be. The fourth and final key accountability that I am evaluated against is that I am supposed to act as an actuarial representative on various task force. Task forces? This can be anything from task forces to evaluate new products and we can come at it from a pricing perspective and underwriting can come at it from a product perspective and business can come at it from a different perspective. It can be something like that. It could be something like, what do we do post pandemic? That's an example of a task force. Um, there are all sorts of task forces that a person can end up on and I am supposed to give my actuarial pricing perspective. What task force I end up on is not necessarily in my control as there are a limited number of task forces that are formed in a year, but it's kind of nice. It feels like when I do end up on these, and it, it happens fairly frequently that I do have to be the actuarial representative on other teams, other departments, other, other places, it feels nice. I do feel valued. I feel like my opinions are respected, which is kind of nice. On the topic of my opinions being respected, one of my goals for 2022 that I've no real plans, no real idea how I'm going to achieve it. So if you have ideas, you can leave me comments below, um, is I want to be more persuasive. I think right now my general strategy for persuading people or negotiating is just talking with a lot of confidence and presenting my facts and being like, I am confident in this. And often people will be like, yeah, no, you're confident. I, I trust you, that's cool, but when it comes to a situation where someone does not agree with my opinion or my assessment of the situation or just doesn't say you're confident so we'll go with that, um, I don't really have other strategies to persuade people to my side. So if I could figure that out, I think I could become an even more powerful human. Thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know any videos you want to see. It's honestly your comments and your engagement that bring me back to YouTube year after year. I know I take breaks all the time, but I love you. Thank you for calling and I'll see you soon. Bye.